age-old story of Cain and Abel is one that we've all heard. But one fact we don't always think about is that Abel was a keeper of the sheep. And keeping the sheep means shearing sheep. Perhaps he was the first man to shear sheep, and now we shear sheep still, centuries later. This afternoon, go with us and look at the shearing of sheep at Cactus Hill. Each spring, we bring the sheep in to shear. Last year, we sheared over a million pounds of wool. We'll take you to the shearing shed, where shearing is done, the wool is sacked, and where we ship the wool to market. Come with us now.
professional sheep shearer. How did you get into the shearing? Well, my father was sheep shearer and my grandfather was sheep shearer, so it was inevitable we're all going to be sheep shearer. Where did you learn how to shear? New Zealand, where I'm from. That's where your father and grandfather was? Yeah, yeah, mainly. Yeah, yeah we just started, left school and started shearing sheep. Easy enough money. How old, what, how old were you when you started? Fifteen. Fifteen, and yeah. you're how old now? Thirty. You've been doing it 15, 15 years. years. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll get another 15 years. Okay. Show us some of your machinery and how the machinery works. Well, you want to come down here. This is a brand new song from the Living Under June CD. This here is what you call a, a shearing motor. It's just a, a basic third horsepower motor with a spindle on the end of it and you've got a, a big cog and another little elbow here and you connect this straight on there. Inside here is a, is a steel shaft and it goes, as this gets turned around, it turns right down here where you've got another elbow that's in here. That's your little shaft there. That's inside here as well. And it comes all the way down here. You have this on a cover over top of this because this is when it's spinning around. If any wool gets caught up, it'll jam everything up. That there. And this here is the handpiece. That there, it's connected up to there. And you've got... This here is a comb. And that's your cutter. The idea is the cutter goes back and forth as fast as it can, cutting the wool. And that's connected to the, the handpiece here. Now we'll turn on. Both these are very sharp. And you sharpen those with a stone? With a disc, it's like a grinding disc. And you put them on the on that side like they last the comb will last an hour and a cutter will last a quarter of an hour. And every time we're changing just because the wool dulls them and the dirt in the wool. But that's about all. With the handpiece, with this going back and forth, there's a lot of tension in it. You've got to hold on to it reasonably tight, otherwise it'll get away on you. If you don't let it, if you hold on to it too tight, if you don't hold on to it tight enough, it'll get away and it will break a lot of equipment. So how long does it take you to sure up land? It'll take between two to three minutes, depending on how, how good you are or how the sheep sits and everything works. How long did it take you to learn how to shear? Oh, I'm still learning to shear. I'm still learning it. Those things that they've improved over the years, when I first started, they had only very few types, different types of combs and cutters. Now they've got a lot of them here. How many different types of combs and cutters are there? And what... Well, with this here, it's a cover comb. It leaves on a little bit more wool for the lambs in the winter. You've got other combs that are are a bit different and they leave, it's all designed on how much wool you want left on and, and the weather and the conditions in the country. So there's differences in the country and the, the type of lamb you're shearing yeah, or what yeah. you're doing. Like we shear over in England as well. So in England they use 13 tooth combs. Over here you use 9 tooth combs. Back in New Zealand they use 13 tooth combs. So you have uh, combs that are a lot of teeth and fewer teeth. And how close does that cut the number of teeth? How does well, if you've, got, if you've got 13 teeth, it's a lot smoother and it's a lot closer to the skin. Um, a nine tooth with um, shoulders on the back of these here will ride a lot higher and leave at least a quarter of an inch all on. Okay. Whereas a 13 tooth will make it a lot, a lot smoother. So if you've got a show lamb, you want to share with the... 13 tooth. 13 tooth. And so a uh, feedlot lamp's probably with a 9 tooth. Yes, yeah. 
Well, see, the, the show ones, uh, you're only shearing three or four lambs and they're not going to get put inside all the time. These feedlot lambs are led outside, so you need a lot more wool left on. When I watch you guys shearing, I see the handpiece, you'll be coming up underneath your hand, you'll shear underneath your hand sometimes, and yeah. you take a lot of coordination, then you'll rotate the handpiece. Well, and how do you know when to get all that in the right place? A lot of times when you're shearing, the sheep's on a curve, and it's just experience, it's just knowing when to stop, when not to, the um, sensitive parts of the sheep. And when you when you have got the handpiece spinning, well, it's not, it, you're still holding on to it, but your hand can only go so far around. So when you go around and the sheep's on a curve, you let you go around and just let it spin, and let you know when when you're in the right angle and right position for the lamb. The idea is to keep the lamb as comfortable as you can while you're shearing. When, if it's not comfortable, it's gonna kick and it's gonna make it a lot harder for you. So when you're rotating your handpiece, it's, in a, it's gonna be in the, in the right position so everything will run smoothly for you. Okay, I also watch when you're shearing, some guys will tie the legs together with a string. You guys don't tie the sheep together with strings. That's, um, just different people have been taught different ways. When we got taught, we got taught this way without tying. There's no real reason to tie. A lot of the people that do time are, are Mexican people and they've been taught that way. Mainly because they used to shear a lot of goats. But now they've brought the style back and they're using it on lambs. There's no real reason to do it. It doesn't really appear to be very good on the sheep. And the idea is to have a sheep that's shorn with no cuts and, and all in one piece without anything hurt on it. I've seen also electric clippers that don't have the drive shaft and the motor that are a uh, one piece unit. How come you don't use that type of clipper? That's, um, that's more for uh, show lambs too, 4H lambs where uh, they get a lot closer. They use sometimes 21 tooth combs and that's just, it's, it's for people that don't really shear all the time and they they aren't that, they aren't designed and they don't last as long. These here are pretty heavy duty equipment and they last a lot longer. Those ones, electric ones, are they're very portable, but they aren't very practical. So, well, I'll just go and grab a sheep and I'll demonstrate how we get them. When you grab them in, the idea is to, is to make them as comfortable Without hurting them, just drag them out. A lot of these lambs are weathers. They've got a fizzle in the middle here, which is, is important to miss. If you don't, they can cause infection when they're later on. I'll just take the belly off and go around. This here is the belly wool. It's part of the sheep's wool that's not as good as the other wool. So we usually try and keep it aside. It's just a, it's a dirtier piece of the wool and it's not as good. We try to keep it out. This also is around, around the back of the sheep. It's, the wall's a lot shorter around here and there's also a lot of dirt in it. So we try and keep that out and keep it separate from the main line as well. This, is, this stuff here is all, the good, all good wool.
This here is where we, where I was talking before about rolling the hand piece around. With the sheet, when it's on angle, it's rolled over like that. You've got to get, keep on going further around and you get to a, a stage where you've got to let your hand piece go so that it spins so it can go further around. The idea is to get the wall off in one piece. If you cut, just by cutting it once. If you cut it twice, the wall's a lot shorter and it gets downgraded. The long wall is a lot better, especially on land. Nice healthy lamb with no minimal cuts and it never hurt it. And this here is your fleece in one piece, you get your belly in another piece over here, and your little other bits of wool. Once this main line's been taken away, you come back and you clean up all the little pieces. And you've got the wool here and the lamb out there. How many can you share in a day, Dave? Well, that's considering the, the conditions, the lambs. A lot of most fellas are doing 200, 250 a day. That's on lambs. On ewes, they're a lot bigger. You've got to be a lot more careful with them. But you're still getting 180 to 200 a day with them. And overseas, like in New Zealand, they get a lot more over there, mainly because of the conditions and the sheep. The lot coarser sheep. There are a lot smaller lambs. There are a lot smaller lambs here, yeah. And the wool, all the wool over here is all fine wool, mainly. And they're a lot harder to shear and a lot, just a lot harder to shear, really. Okay, now how does this facility that you're sharing in right now compared to other facilities, is this better set up or poorer set up? Well, a lot of places, have, especially in um, America, they've got shearing trailers where they um, run them up into a trailer and they've got no cover for the, the sheep. In this facility here, we can put three to 400 lambs in cover overnight so it stops them from getting frost or wet so we can start relatively early in the morning, which is good. And it's under cover so we can, with, with blow, wind blows, we don't have to worry about it. It's, it works pretty good. This is very similar to a lot of places around the world. Okay, we have uh, the wool handling here with the elevator that takes the wool up to the sacker. How does this compare to other wool handling? Well, having the um, conveyor belt makes it a lot easier with the wool all around. It just goes all the way up. They, um, they just almost on this, well this right here is, is belly and tags going up. And you push it up here, go to the conveyor belt. We have, at the far end there, it drops down and it gets into the sacker. It works pretty good. Things where the girls have got two or three girls that are sweeping the wool up and they keep everything as clean as they can. But it works pretty good. It's, there are other ways of doing it, but this is working pretty well right now. How many people does it take to run this operation? Well, what we've got here is, we've got eight shearers here, and three girls picking the wool up. And that's about all, you need three girls for eight shearers, and eight shearers are doing between 1,200 to 1,400 lambs a day which so far is working as long as the weather doesn't hold us up too much. At this particular time of year in January, the weather will hold you up, but it's supposed to be winter. One final question. How come you guys always have a radio playing when you're sharing? Well, it's supposed to be smoothing music, and it's supposed to keep everything nice and calm and make the sheep more relaxed than anyone that lambs kick or something, and the fellas will still keep their cool and everyone's happy. and Happy surroundings is happy work.
I've been sharing for the last 15 to 16 years. I've been travelling around the world for five of those.
Well, we play this segment here and watch the sharing in slow motion. We'll show here how the clipper and the hand has to be working together. He comes in, he takes a full swath, and he goes right under the hand there. This takes precision and skill. Once again, the split second timing here is phenomenal how these shearers do that. Watch as he goes up and takes the wool off the head. The head has to go with the motion of the clipper. The other hand is moving the head into position for the clipper and all the time we have to remember that that clipper has torque on it to make it turn likewise. This is at normal speed. You can see how fast that clipper is running. Watch the clipper rotate here in the air to get lined back up to make another path. All the while the fleece is coming off in one piece. He goes right underneath his other hand. Notice how he moves his hand so easily. This takes years of practice to get this kind of dexterity. Sharing takes a lot of coordination. The skin is tightened here so that the clipper doesn't cut the lamb, but only cuts the wool. He took approximately one minute to share this lamb. It looks real easy when we're watching him do it.